needs to catch up to the 3D printing process right now because, like I said, it's a non-isentropic process, so all of your FEA and or your FEA doesn't really account for this type of plastic. And we don't have models that really. We don't, we're not able to mathematically model the plastic well enough to do FEA on it. We run it through a mathematical simulation to simulate a crash or something like that, but we need to get better mathematical models before we can really do that. But very soon, we're working with some people now that are gonna develop some really cool packages for us in CAD that allow us to design in uh, crumple zones or something like that, that we can model where they're gonna need to be placed and sort of have the CAD program um, advise us on wh what locations are gonna see high lows or something like that. Yeah. So we have to do some beam characterization for the material we're printing to kind of figure out what parameters it prints best at. Um, and that, that means basically what temperature is the best extrusion temperature to ensure that it comes out of the nozzle cleanly, what speed we can move at so that we keep up with the uh, extrusion without overtaking the extrusion should we get a nice clean bead out at the end. Um, that depends a lot on carbon fiber loading. We've done some experiments with different carbon fiber loads in our plastics. Uh, what we printed this car out of was a 15% carbon fiber blend. Uh, we've done a lot of the 20% and we've done up as, up as high as 30%. It really just depends on the plastic.